Five Nights and Beyond Chapter 1. The New Job Jeff Collins, a recently unemployed electrician, sat on the edge of his bed staring at the job listing that he had printed out. The paper was wrinkled from the amount of time he had spent gripping it, reading and rereading the details. Electrician needed for children's entertainment venue. Experience with animatronics a plus. It was an odd job, no doubt about it. But Jeff was desperate. His wife had passed away a year ago and he was raising their young daughter Emily on his own. He needed the income. With a sigh, he reached for his phone and dialed the number listed. A man answered, his voice a friendly baritone that put Jeff at ease. Hello, this is William Afton. How can I assist you today? Jeff explained his situation and his experience as an electrician. William seemed pleased with his qualifications and invited him to Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria for an interview the next day. As he hung up the phone, Jeff felt a mixture of relief and anxiety. He was one step closer to a job, but he had no idea what he was getting himself into. The next day, Jeff drove to the pizzeria, nestled between a laundromat and an auto repair shop. The bright red and blue sign was faded but welcoming, and as he stepped inside, he was hit with a wave of nostalgia. The scent of pizza dough and sugary sodas filled the air. The walls were adorned with vibrant murals of cartoon characters, and in the center of the room a stage hosted four life-sized animatronics. A man approached him, his hand extended for a shake. Jeff, right? I'm William Afton. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's. William's smile was warm, but there was a hint of tiredness in his eyes. He led Jeff to a table and they began to discuss the job in detail. The animatronics are the main attraction here, William explained. They sing, they dance, they interact with the kids, but lately they've been acting off. They're moving when they shouldn't be, and sometimes their programming seems to glitch. Jeff nodded, his gaze lingering on the animatronics. They were impressive, but there was something unsettling about their vacant expressions. I see. Well, I'm sure I can figure out what's wrong. When do you need me to start? As soon as possible, William answered. We're open during the day for birthday parties and such, but you're welcome to work in the evenings after we close. The place is yours after 6 p.m. Over the next few days, Jeff worked tirelessly familiarizing himself with the complex wiring and mechanics of the animatronics. The work was challenging but satisfying, and yet each night when he locked up the pizzeria and drove home, he couldn't shake off the uneasy feeling that lingered. The animatronics with their glassy-eyed stares seemed to watch him, their smiles a little too wide, their movements a little too human. One evening, while he was working on Bonnie the Bunny, he heard a low whisper, Startled, he looked around the empty pizzeria. Hello, he called out, his voice echoing in the large room, but there was no answer, only the distant hum of the refrigerators from the kitchen. He chalked it up to his imagination, a side effect of the late-night work. But as the days turned into weeks, the whispers continued. Sometimes he would hear faint music, the sound of laughter and footsteps. Each night he would check the entire pizzeria, but he was always alone. The whispers and sounds seemed to come from the animatronics. It was impossible, he told himself. They were machines, wired to sing and dance, not whisper in the dark. Jeff couldn't shake off the feeling of unease, but he needed the job, and so he kept his fears to himself. He told himself it was the stress, the late nights. He was an electrician, not a ghost hunter. He was there to fix a problem, and that's what he intended to do. But as he delved deeper into the world of Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, he would soon discover that some problems are not so easily fixed. Some whispers cannot be silenced, and some shadows do not disappear when the lights come on. Chapter 2 Unexpected Visitors After a few weeks of working at the pizzeria, Jeff decided it was time to bring his young daughter Emily to see the animatronics. Emily was a bright, curious eight-year-old, and she loved hearing about her father's work. Jeff was hesitant at first, given the strange occurrences he'd experienced. But Emily's excited pleas finally won him over, and he decided to bring her along one afternoon before his shift. Emily was ecstatic. Her wide eyes sparkled as they took in the vibrant colors of the pizzeria. Her gaze lingered on the animatronics on stage. Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie the Bunny, Chica the Chicken, and Foxy the Pirate Fox were all there, standing still and silent. They're even bigger than I imagined, she whispered in awe. 
Emily's best friend Lucy had tagged along too. Lucy was a year older than Emily and shared her fascination with the animatronics. Both girls stood before the stage, staring up at the towering figures. Daddy, can you make the move? Emily asked, tugging at Jeff's sleeve. Jeff hesitated, then nodded. He led the girls to a safe distance, then went to the control room. With a flick of a few switches, the animatronics sprung to life. They started performing one of their programmed songs, their movements a bit jerky but still impressive. The girls watched in awe, clapping and laughing as Freddy and his gang performed their routine. As the day turned into evening, Emily and Lucy begged to stay longer. Jeff, seeing their excitement, agreed. But only for a little while, okay, I have work to do. The girls nodded, completely engrossed in the world of Freddy Fazbear's. Later in the evening, as Jeff was working on rewiring Bonnie, he noticed the girls whispering. They were huddled by the stage, staring up at Foxy with wide eyes. "'What's going on?' he asked, approaching them. "'Daddy,' Emily said, her voice trembling slightly. "'Foxy, he—' he whispered to us. A chill ran down Jeff's spine. "'What did he say?' he asked, trying to keep his voice steady. "'He said—' "'He said he wants to be free,' Lucy whispered, her eyes welling up with tears. Jeff felt a knot forming in his stomach. He looked at the animatronics, their painted eyes seeming to stare back at him— what was happening at Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. He needed to find out. Chapter 3. Whispers and Shadows The next day at school, Emily and Lucy couldn't help but share their extraordinary experience with their classmates. Their friends were captivated by their tales of the whispering animatronics at Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. However, a tall, freckled boy named Tim, known for his love of scary stories, had a different tale to share. Did you know years ago children went missing at Freddy's? Tim began, his eyes gleaming with a mischievous spark. The classroom fell silent, all eyes on him. They say the kids were lured away by someone or something and were never found. The room was filled with gasps and wide-eyed glances. Emily and Lucy exchanged uneasy looks. Their encounter with Foxy seemed even more unsettling now. That's not all, Tim continued. Rumor has it that the animatronics come to life at night, possessed by the spirits of the lost children seeking revenge. The tale was met with a mix of fear and skepticism. It was well known that Tim enjoyed terrifying his classmates with his gruesome tales, but there was something about this story that felt too real, especially to Emily and Lucy. The day passed in a blur, the ominous tale echoing in their minds. As they walked home, Lucy broke the silence. Emily, do you think, do you think what Tim said could be true? Emily hesitated before answering, I don't know, Lucy, but Daddy works there and he hasn't mentioned anything like that. But what about Foxy? Lucy insisted. He spoke to us. What if, what if he's one of those lost kids? Emily shook her head, trying to dispel the unsettling thoughts. We must have imagined it, Lucy. They're just machines. But as the sun began to set, casting long shadows on their path, Emily couldn't help but wonder if their innocent visit to the pizzeria had unveiled something much darker. Chapter 4 The First Night The following weeks were filled with a growing sense of unease for Jeff. He couldn't shake off Emily's claim about Foxy whispering to her. Every night as he worked on the animatronics, he felt a pair of eyes watching him heard whispers in the silent pizzeria. He tried to brush it off, telling himself he was letting his imagination run wild, but the feeling of dread was hard to ignore. One evening, as he was checking the wires of Chica, he heard a soft giggle. He froze, his heart pounding in his chest. Slowly he turned around, but the pizzeria was as empty as ever. He scanned the room, his gaze falling on the animatronics. Their eyes seemed to glow in the dim light, their smiles a bit too wide. With a deep breath, he decided to inspect the control room. As he entered the control room, the monitors displayed the feed from the security cameras installed throughout the pizzeria. Everything seemed normal until he noticed movement on one of the screens. It was Bonnie. The animatronic was moving on its own, its eyes glowing in the dim light. That's not possible, Jeff muttered to himself, rubbing his eyes in disbelief. As he switched to the camera feed on the main stage, his blood ran cold. Freddy Fazbear had moved from his original position. The animatronic was now facing the camera, his eyes glowing, his grin wide. This was not a simple glitch, this was something else, something he couldn't explain. 
His heart pounded in his chest as he ran out of the control room. He had to leave, had to get out of the pizzeria. But just as he was about to reach the exit, the lights flickered and went out. The pizzeria plunged into darkness. Jeff fumbled for his flashlight, his hands shaking. As the beam of light cut through the darkness, he saw them. The animatronics were off the stage, their bodies rigid, their eyes glowing. They were facing him, their grins wide and menacing. He backed away slowly, his mind racing. He had to get to the control room, had to cut off their power. It was his only chance. The journey back to the control room was a blur. He could hear the whirring of the animatronics as they moved, the soft thud of their footsteps echoing in the empty pizzeria. His heart pounded in his chest as he finally reached the control room. With a swift move, he cut off the power to the animatronics. The whirring stopped, the footsteps ceased, and the pizzeria fell into an eerie silence. Jeff slumped against the wall, his breathing ragged. He had come face to face with the impossible, the unexplainable. The animatronics were more than machines. They were entities with a mind of their own, and they were free to roam the pizzeria at night. As he left the pizzeria that night, he knew he was dealing with something far more dangerous than electrical glitches. He was dealing with a haunting. He needed to find out more, to understand what was happening, and above all, he needed to protect Emily. Chapter 5 Unsettling Discoveries In the days that followed, Jeff found himself buried in old newspapers and online articles about Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. He discovered a series of unresolved mysteries and tragic incidents associated with the pizzeria. The stories of missing children that Tim had shared were not just rumors— they were real, well-documented incidents that the local authorities had investigated but never solved. Among the articles, he found one about the previous security guard, a man named Michael who had mysteriously vanished. According to his colleagues, Michael had begun acting paranoid during his last few days, always looking over his shoulder and jumping at the smallest sounds. Then one day he simply didn't show up for work. His home was found abandoned, his belongings still there. He had simply disappeared, much like the children. Jeff felt a chill run down his spine. The whispers, the animatronics moving on their own, the eerie feeling of being watched. Michael had probably experienced all of this before he disappeared. With a sinking feeling, Jeff realized he couldn't ignore the evidence in front of him. There was something deeply wrong with Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. The animatronics were not just malfunctioning, they were haunted. His thoughts raced back to Emily and Lucy. The girls had interacted with the animatronics, heard them whisper. Were they in danger too? He felt a wave of protectiveness wash over him. He needed to keep Emily safe, away from the pizzeria. With newfound resolve, he decided to confront William. He needed answers. He had a right to know what was happening, what he was dealing with. And if William didn't provide those answers, Jeff was ready to quit. The next day, Jeff arrived at the pizzeria earlier than usual. He found William in his office, a cramped room filled with paperwork and pizza boxes. We need to talk, William, he said, slamming the stack of newspaper clippings on the table. William looked taken aback. He glanced at the articles and then at Jeff. What is this about, Jeff? The animatronics, the disappearances, the hauntings, Jeff said, his voice steady. I've seen it, experienced it, and I think you know more than you're letting on. William sighed, leaning back in his chair. His usual friendly demeanor was replaced by a serious, almost stern expression. Jeff, these are just stories, rumors, nothing more. But Jeff was not convinced. My daughter heard Foxy whisper, William, the animatronics move on their own at night. This is not normal. It's not just a glitch or a rumor. I need the truth, William. I deserve the truth. William stared at Jeff for a long moment, his expression unreadable. Finally, he nodded, a sigh escaping his lips. All right, Jeff, I'll tell you everything but I must warn you, the truth is not easy to bear. Chapter 6 The Haunting Over the next few days, William told Jeff the dark history of Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. He spoke of incidents that were hushed up, of investigations that led nowhere, and of the strange occurrences that started soon after the children disappeared. Jeff listened, his heart heavy with a growing sense of dread. At the same time, Emily began noticing strange occurrences at home. Her toys moved on their own, and she often heard whispers in the night. It was as though the eerie events from the pizzeria had followed her home. One night Emily woke up to the sound of soft music. 
It was coming from her toy box, from her small Freddy Fazbear figurine. She could hear it whispering, just like Foxy had at the pizzeria. It was saying the same thing, we want to be free. Terrified, Emily ran to her father's room. Daddy, the toys are talking, she cried, clinging to him. Jeff felt a chill run down his spine. The haunting had spread to their home. He comforted Emily, telling her it was just a bad dream, but he knew it was far from it. Lucy, too, experienced similar incidents. She claimed her bonny plushie moved on its own, and that she could hear it whispering at night. The girls were terrified, and Jeff felt helpless. He had brought this upon them, exposed them to the haunted animatronics. Meanwhile, Jeff confronted William about the incidents. William's response was a mix of surprise and concern. He admitted that he had heard about similar incidents in the past, but had dismissed them as nightmares or hallucinations. He promised to look into it, but Jeff could tell he was as clueless as he was. As the haunting grew stronger, Jeff decided to seek help. He contacted a local paranormal investigator, a woman named Marianne, who had a reputation for dealing with haunted objects. He explained the situation to her, expecting skepticism. But Marianne listened with genuine interest. Haunted animatronics, you say? She mused over the phone. That's a new one, but I've seen stranger things. Let me do some research and I'll get back to you. While waiting for Marianne's call, Jeff decided to dig deeper into the pizzeria's history. He revisited the old newspaper articles, online forums, and even found a few former employees willing to talk. The picture that emerged was deeply unsettling. The pizzeria was not just haunted, it was cursed. Chapter 7 The confrontation days turned into weeks as Jeff delved deeper into the mysteries surrounding Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. His nights were filled with endless research, his days consumed by his efforts to protect Emily and Lucy from the haunted animatronics. The girls were scared, their once joyful personalities replaced with fear and anxiety. During this time, Marianne proved to be a valuable ally. She conducted her own research, reaching out to her contacts in the paranormal community, and came up with a theory. It's possible, she explained one day, that the spirits of the missing children are trapped within the animatronics. It's not unheard of for spirits to attach themselves to objects, especially if they have unfinished business or if they died under traumatic circumstances. Jeff felt a shiver run down his spine. It was a horrifying thought, but it explained the whispering and the strange behavior of the animatronics. They were not just machines, they were vessels for lost souls. Armed with this knowledge, Jeff decided to confront William once again. He found the pizzeria owner in his cramped office buried under a pile of paperwork. William, Jeff began, his voice steady. I believe the animatronics are haunted by the spirits of the missing children. William looked up, his eyes wide. He opened his mouth to respond, but Jeff cut him off. I've spoken to a paranormal investigator. She believes the spirits are trapped and are trying to communicate, to reach out for help. We have to do something, William. We have to free them. For a moment, William was silent. Then he let out a deep sigh, running a hand through his greying hair. You're right, Jeff, he admitted. I've known for a while, but I didn't know what to do. The animatronics are the lifeblood of this pizzeria. Without them. But you're right, it's not just about the business, it's about those kids. Together, they agreed to find a way to free the spirits. With Marianne's help, they began planning a seance to communicate with the spirits directly. It was a long shot, but it was the only plan they had. As Jeff left William's office that day, he felt a glimmer of hope. The haunting of Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria was far from over, but they finally had a plan. They were finally taking action. Chapter 8 The Nightmare Unleashed The night of the seance arrived. Marianne had provided them with instructions and necessary items, a circle of salt to protect them, candles to light the room, and a Ouija board to communicate with the spirits. Jeff felt a lump in his throat as he, William, and Marianne sat around the board, the animatronics looming in the dimly lit room. As Marianne began the seance, a cold wind swept through the room despite the closed doors and windows. The candles flickered as she called out to the spirits, asking them to communicate. The planchette on the Ouija board started moving, slowly spelling out words, F-R-E-E-D-O-M, freedom. The temperature in the room seemed to drop further. Suddenly the lights flickered and went out. The only light was from the flickering candles casting long, dancing shadows on the walls. Then the animatronic's eyes began to glow. One by one they stepped off the stage, their movements eerily fluid in the dim light. 
In the chaos that ensued, the circle of salt was disrupted, breaking the protective barrier. The animatronics broke free, moving towards the exit. Jeff tried to stop them, but it was like trying to halt a freight train. Before they knew it, the animatronics had escaped the pizzeria and disappeared into the night. As the reality of the situation sank in, Jeff, William, and Marianne were left in the eerie silence of the pizzeria. They had failed. The nightmare they had tried to contain was now unleashed upon the town. The following days were filled with terror as the animatronics roamed the streets at night, causing havoc and fear. The town was in chaos. Schools were temporarily shut down, residents were advised to stay indoors after sunset, and local authorities were at a loss, unable to stop the animatronics. Jeff felt a heavy guilt weighing on him. He had wanted to help the trapped spirits, but in doing so, he had unleashed a nightmare upon the town. But he was not ready to give up. The spirits of the children needed their help, and he was determined to set things right. Chapter 9 The Battle As the town of Hurricane descended into chaos, Jeff found himself at the center of a storm. He was filled with guilt and desperation, but he was not defeated. Alongside Marianne and William, he hatched a plan to lure the animatronics back to the pizzeria. Using a combination of the music from the pizzeria and a path of the children's belongings collected from the town's residents, they planned to guide the animatronics back. It was a risky plan, but they were running out of options. The night of the plan, Jeff couldn't help but feel a pit in his stomach. He watched from the control room's monitors as the animatronics approached the objects. Freddy was the first to stop, his glowing eyes focused on a child's discarded teddy bear. Slowly, one by one, they began to follow the trail. Back at the pizzeria, Marianne had set up another seance. This time, they were not just planning to communicate with the spirits, they were aiming to free them. The salt circle was larger, the candles brighter, and the air heavy with anticipation and fear. As the animatronics entered the pizzeria, the doors were swiftly locked behind them. They seemed confused, their mechanical heads turning as they scanned the room. Then they saw the stage, the familiar props, and the comforting music. Slowly, they moved towards it, their movements less menacing, more childlike. With the animatronics distracted, Marianne began the seance. She called out to the spirits, her voice echoing in the silent pizzeria. The air grew colder, the lights flickered, and the animatronics stood still. The planchette on the Ouija board began to move. Thank you. The voice was not from Marianne or the Ouija board. It was a chorus of children's voices, soft and light, filled with relief. The animatronics' eyes dimmed, their bodies slumping as if a great weight had been lifted. Then they collapsed, lifeless and still. The haunting was over. The spirits of the children had been freed. Chapter 10. The Aftermath In the days that followed, the town of Hurricane slowly returned to normal. The animatronics were returned to Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, now just empty shells of their former selves. The haunting was over, the spirits of the missing children finally at peace. Jeff continued to work at the pizzeria, helping William to repair the animatronics. They were no longer haunted, but they were still a significant part of the pizzeria. Slowly they were brought back to life, their mechanics functioning like before, minus the eerie after-hours movements. Emily and Lucy returned to their normal lives, their fear replaced by relief and a new sense of maturity. They had faced a haunting and lived to tell the tale, their friendship stronger than ever. The girls never forgot the spirits they had encountered, often sharing their story with their classmates. Marianne continued her work as a paranormal investigator, her experience at Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria adding to her credibility and fame. She often mentioned the incident in her talks and interviews, the story serving as a reminder of the unseen world that exists alongside our own. As for Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, it regained its popularity. Families returned, children laughed, and the animatronics performed. The dark past was left behind, becoming nothing more than a local legend, a scary tale shared among friends. But those who had experienced the haunting knew the truth. They carried the memory with them, a reminder of the spirits they had freed. The pizzeria was not just a place of joy and laughter, it was a monument to a tragedy that had been resolved, a nightmare that had ended. Life moved on in the small town of Hurricane. The sun set, the sun rose, and Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria remained a place of joy and laughter. But when the night fell and the last light was turned off, one could almost hear a soft whisper carried in the wind, 
a chorus of children's voices saying, Thank you.